Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to our session today. I, I hope uh, no one had trouble finding the spot. <laughs> thank you, though. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Kundana, uh, Kundana Palagiri. I'm a program manager in the Azure Compute team. I work on primarily infrastructure as service. And with me here is Ning, my colleague. Yeah. My name is Ning Kwam. I'm the program manager for Azure Open Source Technology, uh, Technology Center in Shanghai. And our team work on uh, open source uh, uh, technology on Azure and also the Cloud Foundry engineering work. Cool. So let's get started. Uh, today, we, me and Ning, we are going to talk about Cloud Foundry and Azure. And you know what we want you to take away with is learn about Cloud Foundry support for Azure and how you can manage your workloads, uh, whether it is uh, in Azure or a hybrid cloud environment. So before we take a look at what we are supporting, uh, this is a high level uh, a picture of what, what we are going to be uh, en enabling uh, with this announcement. So we are, Azure is providing a Bosch CPI uh, implemented using the new resource manager APIs. And I'll get, I'll get into the details of what resource manager APIs are in a bit. So we have the CPI for Azure. We are also going to leverage the Azure templates for simplifying the deployment steps. Again, in a bit, we'll get into what Azure templates are. Basically, they will show you how Azure templates can simplify deployment. And we, are going, we have actually embraced the community model for supporting the CPI. And we, the, last, the last, last but not least is uh, uh, we have provided consistent user experience for multiple clouds. So what that means is uh, the, cloud, the experience that you get for deploying Cloud Foundry in any cloud, in any cloud platform, is consistent with the experience that you're going to get in Azure. And finally, using Cloud Foundry and Azure, you can also extend your on-prem workloads to cloud. We'll again get into details of what all this means is. Uh, what are our engineering goals? So when we started on this project, last December, we took over the project of uh, enabling Cloud Foundry CPI. There was already some work in a GitHub branch. So when we took that project, these were the engineering goals that we had in mind. Uh, first and foremost, we wanted to ship an all open source project under uh, the Apache 2 license. Uh, this project is today available in that URL. Uh, the next thing is we wanted to be part of the community. As we developed the CPI, we wanted to actually leverage the power of the community and contribute to the community. And, uh, you know, and also align with the community's engineering practices, whether it's you know, the testing practices, the unit test, uh, CI setup, et cetera. And, fine, and the next thing, we, the goal that we had was uh, as we take the CPI and adopt it to Azure, you know, how do we make it simplify the deployment steps in Azure, you know, whether it's by you know, providing some kind of pre-created te templates or by providing documentation. And finally, uh, you know, we have taken a crawl, walk, run approach. We have, this is a first step to uh, support Cloud Foundry in Azure. And we have an ongoing commitment to enhance this support in Azure. So before we get started, right, I want a quick show of hands. Uh, how many of you uh, use Azure? Cool. Uh, so Azure as a, so why Azure? Why, why did we do, why did we actually start this project of supporting Cloud Foundry and Azure? Uh, one of the reasons is, you know, our customers have asked that they want to run on Azure, and that's, that's simply the reason why we've uh, taken on this project. But a bigger question, why Azure, is Azure is uh, Microsoft's cloud platform environment, and as an open cloud, it supports hyperscale, enterprise-grade, and hybrid environments. So Azure supports both platform as a service and infrastructure as a service for both Windows and Linux uh, environments. Little bit, we'll get into details of what this means and why this is important. So, first thing is the uh, the hyperscale part. So, hyperscale is the ability to run your code anywhere you want, knowing that you can scale up or scale down without worrying your, about capacity, running out of capacity. So Azure, as a hyperscale cloud, is actually operating in 19 center, 19 data center regions. Uh, what this gives is, again, unprecedented access to capacity. This is an investment we've been, uh, it's an ongoing investment from Azure for the last couple of years. 
And then this slide uh, is a point in time snapshot of the technologies that are supported in Azure today. Azure is on a path to actually uh, you know, embrace many of these open source technologies. This does not actually reflect everything that we support today, but uh, some of the technologies. So if you look at uh, you know, uh, tools to provision in tools to provision uh, resources in Azure, or the languages that, that can be done in Azure, this is a growing list. You can do it not only from our own tools that we provide, but you can also do it from some of the third party tools that uh, either we have worked with them to uh, integrate it to, uh, with Azure, or provided by the community itself. So the next thing, uh, you know, if it, when the next thing I want to talk about is the Azure Resource Manager, as one of the building blocks that we use for uh, uh, managing infrastructure in Azure. So before we talk about this, uh, I want to give a quick background of why this is important. Previously, uh, you know, when you create resources in Azure, whether it is storage, network, or compute, you know, you would have to like provision all of them separately, and then uh, uh, connect them, and then you know, you need to connect them together. Uh, what Azure Resource Manager brings to the table is uh, it actually gives you the power to de define declaratively the resources that you are going to use in your application. You can set the dependencies between them. And uh, at that, once you have defined your infrastructure in a JSON, like JSON language, Azure Resource Manager is responsible for instantiating uh, all the resources that were specified in the Resource Manager. And uh, it, but it does that by using an orchestration model, and it also supports rollback. And behind the scenes, when you define your infrastructure uh, in this JSON template, behind the, this is this is a JSON file which can be checked in as uh, you know che it's checked into source repo and you know it also supports things like parameterization so you can define various environments your dev test stage and you can uh, s uh, provide different parameters for each environment so wh why this is important is you know to do repeatable work these templates can be a real time saver because huge time saver because you know you are uh, defining everything in a template and reusing so just an example of how we we have taken this template model and we have applied to cloud foundry uh, so here's an example. So you know, if you have used Cloud Foundry, uh, the first step you know that you know to to set up your uh, uh, Bosch virtual machine, you need to go through certain prerequisites like create a storage environment, virtual network, reserve some IPs. You know, you need you, if you don't have an existing dev box, you need to set up. You can you need to set up one as well. So we have taken all these steps. And we have provided a getting started template. Uh, this template, which is available in GitHub, uh, I can share the URL after at the end. This template behind the scenes, it provisions all these resources that we have talked about here. And it parameterizes all of them. So you can specify uh, you know, your own uh, parameters for creating this. And when this single click template is deployed, you get this environment configured for uh, running Bosch. So this again, this you know, as you use Azure uh, for deploying Cloud Foundry or uh, other resources, you will come across the uh, templates in many places, and Ning will demo the template. So the next thing I want to talk about is briefly is the hybrid cloud environments. How how does Azure fit into the uh, hybrid environment model? So the you know, if the, uh, many of our customers that we work with have a model where they have some resources on-prem, whether it is an Azure-based cloud or whether it's their own private data center, and they want to extend it to Azure. So, with the work that we are, uh, with the work that we have done with the Azure Resource Manager and Azure Stack. You can actually take the uh, same CPI and uh, make it work both not only in Azure but in on-prem as well. So this is where uh, Azure Stack comes into picture. So Azure Stack is the Azure uh, the Azure APIs for private clouds. Azure, Azure Stack, which was announced recently last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago at Build and Ignite, basically takes existing uh, Azure resource, Azure APIs and makes it available in private cloud, like I said. And it has a consistent architecture, so it basically you know, enables the same hybrid, enterprise-grade, uh, hyperscale model. So what that means is if you have an application that is running on-premise in an Azure Stack environment, 
and it it uh, and and if it and it's running in Azure, you can use the same CPI. Our our vision, at least, is to use the same CPI and target a different endpoint to manage that application in Azure Stack. And what this what this gives us is, uh, you know, this really enables the same ecosystem. You know, the ecosystem that is available for Azure customers today is also would be available for the uh, on-prem data center customers as well. Okay, so Ning is going to give an overview of uh, Cloud Foundry deployment in Azure. Thank you, Kandema. So for Cloud Foundry on, on Azure, this project is all standard. Um, um, for any cloud providers, uh, if you want to onboard uh, Cloud Foundry on this uh, provider, usually you need to provide the Bosch release, uh, the stem cell, and the manifest file. And for us, we deliver exactly with the same process. So for the Bosch release, the main engineering work is the CPI, which is the cloud provider interface to Azure, uh, enable Bosch to talking to Azure through this uh, interface. That's the major work. And then the correspondent uh, Bosch component that need to be updated in align with the changes for the new CPI. Uh, so that's the main deliverables. And we also uh, build the Azure Storm cell. Um, currently, for um, uh, it's already in a, a beta release. Uh, it's originally uh, currently it's in Ubuntu, and uh, pretty soon we will support uh, CentOS and Red Hat. So these are the two main engineering deliverables plus the manifest file, and then and the and the next one is the resources management template, as Condana just mentioned. Uh, these are the uh, this is the pre-configured template that simplify your setting up uh, the, uh, uh, the setup of the Azure environment. And then um, just align with most uh, of the cloud providers, we will also provide the end-to-end -end guidance about how to set up and deploy Azure uh, uh, Cloud Foundry on Azure. So this includes the support for both the single node and the multiple node Cloud Foundry VMs. And um, also, we will have guidance for both the, the standard uh, manual steps, as, long, um, as well as uh, the guidance for how to use the uh, predefined template to ca configure the environment. And after that, um, one thing we're also planning is the Cloud Foundry cluster setup. Uh, so we know after we enable the, um, the, this infrastructure on Azure, the next step is an uh, admin need to uh, create the Cloud Foundry cluster. Uh, so that will include database setup, uh, load balancer, networking settings, and, uh, um, and we will work with the community to optimize these resources and uh, work with community to provide um, additional guidance and uh, the, the setup documents. So that's the major deliverable. So one of the things I want to call out is even though right now the project is ready, we finished it, but we really didn't release it until we wanted all the documentation to be updated. So this is an important deliverable as well, like you know, providing this documentation along with the CPI. Yeah, so the Azure uh, Cloud Foundry deployment experience is quite similar uh, than other uh, existing cloud providers. Usually it contains two parts. The first one is the Azure environment setup. Um, this is the uh, uh, every provider need to have. The second one is deploy the Cloud Foundry. For uh, the environment setup, the first thing you need is the account. Uh, you need a subscription. You need uh, to hold the enough cloud services and VMs for your uh, Cloud Foundry VM um, network and the storage account to hold the VHDs. Network environment is the major part. Uh, usually, um, uh, this includes the VNet and the two subnets, and also the public IP for Bosch and the Cloud Foundry. Next one is for the secure communication between Bosch and the cloud providers. Usually, you need a certificate, key pair. In Azure's case, we have service principle for your subscription, and we have detail step for that. For all these, um, we have end-to-end uh, -end documentation, and uh, we also have a single-click deployment with a template. 
The other part is uh, the deployment of Azure, uh, the deployment of Cloud Foundry. This is almost exactly the same step as any other cloud providers. So usually this includes create a dev machine, uh, which uh, you will load the, um, the stem cell and the bash releases. And this dev machine can be any machine. Um, but for uh, our beta to simplify your experience, we actually created for you uh, in our template. And then uh, the next step is configure and uh, deploy micro bash through the uh, dev machine. And then you can also configure and deploy Bosch or even multiple Bosch uh, use, uh, from, um, uh, from Michael Bosch. We know most customers um, can be accomplished uh, through the Michael Bosch, but some customers, they have a, a more complicated infrastructure. They want Bosch or multiple Bosch. That's also supported. And then, uh, and then you use Bosch to, or Michael Bosch to, um, to create the Cloud Foundry network from here. And these are the steps that consistent with all other cloud providers. So um, if you are already familiar with any of these, and this is a very uh, simple experience for you. So ca can I ask a quick question? How many of you use mul um, multiple Bosch environments to deploy Cloud Foundry? It's, it's otherwise, is it single Bosch environment, most cases? OK, cool, yeah. thank you. So Cloud Foundry template, uh, as Kandala just mentioned, uh, that's a new release Azure provided to simplify most of the deployment work. And then for uh, Cloud Foundry, I think that Cloud Foundry is a good candidate to uh, utilize this technology to simplify users' experience. Um, this can be accessed through both the portal or you can do it through scripting. And usually it's simply three steps. Uh, first, you load an existing template we already defined for you, and then you customize it uh, uh, using your organization name and your um, um, parameters, and then you deploy it. It was just running on the, uh, on the background. And then all these can be automated. So here I'm going to show you how this, uh, how we can use a template to set up the Azure environment. It will take a while, so I will mo uh, mostly going through the, uh, the UI steps. And then um, with an existing Cloud Foundry deployment, how we can push uh, a simple first uh, application. So first, uh, this is our, uh, the Azure Quick Start Templates website. Uh, from here, there are um, hundreds of predefined templates. Uh, you can see if you can just click any of the template. What it will tell you is it will display the parameters you need for this template. And it will also show you uh, how you can launch or scripting this. There's another button that will take you to the UI, which you can edit this template. This is one way to uh, start your template. And there's uh, also the other way is you can go directly to the GitHub. This is the GitHub. Uh, it contains all the source code for this template. And you can always uh, run, give your feedback or your pull request here. And uh, again, here, uh, it also have uh, the deployment, uh, the, the parameter for this deployment. For this one, this is the Michael Bush deployment um, template. So it asks you for um, some minimal um, information you need it, about the account name, account uh, password, and uh, the VM size location. And here, uh, it also have a button to take you to the um, the UI that, uh, that will allow you to edit your template.
So here uh, we get to the UI that uh, you can edit your template. Uh, this is the, actually the source code of this template. We have document on these uh, very simple um, uh, syntax for you to edit. And at the end, you will see all the resources that's added. And you can add, remove, or modify the settings of your template here. And then you save it. Once you save it, uh, you can edit your parameters. And here, what you needed is uh, you need to uh, create a new storage account. Here, I give a new CSS. And uh, since we also create the, the develop machine for you, we need uh, admin username and password for this machine. And you need to choose where you want this uh, as VM is put uh, located under the VM name. So you save it. Um, this uh, need to be created under uh, existing subscription. So you select your subscription. And for this resources group, you can either uh, put it under an existing resources group name or you enter a name, a new name. And we also need to select a location. So after that, after you enter uh, the template, the parameters, and choosing the, the right location and names, you just click Create. And then it will just create this template at the background. Uh, so it will take a few minutes. Uh, to save the time, I can show you uh, one of the template I, um, resources I already created. So this is the, um, the resources group I just created, just using the same methodology. And then uh, it's already created uh, with uh, the, the machine that we created, that the dev machine, uh, with this network interface, and the public IP address, and uh, the virtual network, which contain the, the two uh, subnet and the storage account we need. So with this, you will be uh, simply just uh, go through a UI, enter all the customized parameters, and then one click, you will be able to uh, create an Azure environment that you can build your Cloud Foundry on it. So uh, after this, the next step is um, on your dev machine, as we said, um, create Michael Bosch, create Bosch, and then through Michael Bosch, uh, create your uh, Cloud Foundry uh, network. And these steps are all standard. So here I have um, one machine that, uh, uh, one Cloud Foundry machine I already created. So we'll just uh, uh, SSH to it and we'll see uh, how we can push a simple application. So while we wait for that, right, what we temp the template is only one mechanism to do it. You can also do the same thing by directly calling the Azure CLI, which is the, uh, the command line tool for creating provisioning resources in Azure. So here I'm a uh, SSH to the, the Cloud Foundry VM. And for this VM, uh, just logging, we already have a, a, a simple application here. And you can see the, uh, uh, we have a JS file which create a website, a uh, first website on the Cloud Foundry. And um, let me just log into this. Now I'm logging to Cloud Foundry and I need uh, my username and password. Okay, now I just get into uh, access the Cloud Foundry. And then I'm ready to push the first application now. So you see, uh, now it begins to 
install and uh, compile and uh, um, build the application and put it to the appropriate host. So the instance is starting. Seems to me it's uh, successful. So go back to my uh, to my website. Uh, this is the website that webs uh, that um, web uh, the Node.js application just uh, created. And let me see. So this is the first message that application sent to Azure. Hello, Cloud Foundry. Okay. So uh, that is the demo of the, the template and how the first application is pushed on cloud on Azure. Back to our message. Um, learnings from the uh, Cloud Foundry projects. So this is actually, this is a totally open source project. And uh, we are an open source team, Microsoft. Uh, we have people from, cloud, uh, from open source, but we also have a lot of people like me uh, working in Windows for, uh, for many years. So it's a good journey and a lot of good learnings. And uh, I think the biggest thing is we are amazed how, um, uh, about the power of the community. And this project actually originally started by the community. And we have Nick Terry, who is the first community member to start this project, and all our code is built on his uh, original work. And also Dimitri, who is uh, along the, uh, the time, always give us support and guidance, give us the regular uh, reviews. And uh, we, we really want to thank uh, Nick and Dimitri. Is Nick and Dimitri here? Okay, I hope they are here, but um, and I just uh, also everyone in the community, we really appreciate uh, that support and help. And we also feel uh, this structure, this Cloud Foundry and CPI structure is very well designed and flexible. Uh, the integration actually is very smooth. Uh, we didn't hit a lot of big uh, blockers. And after that, we find the experience is also quite similar and trans uh, transferable between different cloud providers, which is, I think, is a big benefit of this, um, the portable structure. And abundant resources and the ag agility in the community, which we are uh, really impressed. And we also learned to, in, um, to align our internal goal with the community goal. Uh, it's not like a, a program manager, we are used to uh, control the schedule and control uh, our priority. But now we are working with the community. So we know how we, uh, we are not only um, creating a commercial project. We are also part of the project, uh, the community. So uh, this is also our priority to enhance the community and to give back to the community. So that also reflect into our schedule and, uh, uh, and our priorities. Uh, challenges, uh, of course, so um, all the moving parts. And although before, like in Microsoft, I, I feel like we have a lot of control over the versions and over and then when we can make change, when we can st stabilize. But right now, when we're working with community, we, we probably only know uh, the, um, whether the things worked and how the competitive works until uh, we test. And especially when building the stem cell. And you will find you, you have a stable build, you have a stable dependency, but there are still changes, for example, even coming from, um, from the OS itself. So it's a big learning, and, but this is the part I know I see the community. Uh, that's the part that you gain the benefit of the community, but also the part uh, you have to uh, uh, take the challenge for. But I know community is improving on this, and uh, we are currently moving toward external CPI model which will make the CPI be more transparent and less dependent on the uh, on Bush. So this will make us uh, our build more stable. Actually, this is our goal for our beta. We'll move to there soon. Yeah, this is actually a very exciting milestone for us and on two counts. One is not only this is the first time Cloud Foundry has you know, worked completely end-to-end -end on Azure, and second thing is this is the first time you know, um, from Microsoft we have, been, we have come to this conference to talk about it. So a really exciting milestone for us. So um, all the work currently, the, the binary currently is available on GitHub, 
and then we'll give the link at the end of the slides. And uh, at the end of uh, th this week, uh, the end of this, uh, actually this event, uh, you will be able to preview this. And uh, we will have the document, we'll have the blog. So this is the first step. And then, um, but at, the, at this time we are not declare uh, uh, the, the beta yet because we want to move to the external CPI which the community recommend us to do. Uh, that probably will take us to around the end of May. And at that time we will have um, an external CPI um, a stable build, and then we will send the bids to the, uh, the Cloud Foundry DL, uh, which uh, the, uh, the distribution list, uh, so that everyone can try and use the DL to discuss about the uh, issues or questions. And then our uh, next goal is upstream the, goal, uh, the code back to the community source depot. So this will be our uh, GA. So once we get the community fully approved and it will become an official community supported project, uh, we will uh, declare the CA and then uh, declare the GA and officially uh, on, on supported onboarding to Azure. And then um, the four and five are the next step. And uh, we know once you get the deployment, once people hit the, de uh, um, hit the part, they, they will do the um, daily operation and the configuration, then uh, they will have a lot of questions on how this works on Azure, how those open source software, like uh, different database or uh, load balance, how that work on Azure. Uh, this is supposed to be quite transparent. It should work between different cloud providers, but uh, we also want to work community to see your feedback, to see if there are anything we can optimize and improve. So here is the link. Uh, you can click and then you can find uh, the first version that, uh, that will work. And we'd for probably at the end of this week, we'll have a blog and we'll have a documentation. Currently, it doesn't have a documentation yet. And we'll upload the, the guidance. And then you can also use GitHub for your feedbacks. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much. Okay.